the horrors know no end. It seems you know, we talk about all kinds of stuff on this channel, all kinds of anti-trans news, and it always feels like, man, this has got to be like, like as bad as it's going to get, right? And I like it's a, I think that that's the normalcy bias pulling at your brain, the normalcy bias saying, it's not that bad. Bad things happen to other people, but not to you. This disaster will probably not be that bad. Like normalcy bias is what has you not buying extra water and not going down to your basement because you know, oh, well, usually when we get tornadoes, they just swing this other direction. Oh, it probably won't come through here. Like statistically, it probably won't come through your specific neighborhood, but the normalcy bias is so real. Like, yeah, that sense of, oh, it can't happen here. That's the normalcy bias coming to get you. Yeah, get used to things not being how they used to be. Anyway, in Tennessee, apparently they've been passing some anti-trans laws or anti-LGBTQ laws, as you do. And in this particular instance, Tennessee passed a bill that will allow parents who are anti-queer, anti-LGBT, they will allow those people to adopt children. And they can adopt specifically LGBTQ plus kids. Um, <clears throat> looking at this from Aaron Reed, let's make this bigger actually so you can read it. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, maybe subscribe, hit all notifications if you want. Feel free to check out the links in the description. You might find some merch you like, or you can hit up the Patreon to support the content and find free stuff. Aaron says, in a horrific move, Tennessee's passed a bill allowing parents who are religiously or morally opposed to LGBTQ plus people to adopt LGBTQ plus kids. This could result in anti-queer foster parents putting queer kids through conversion therapy. She covers the bill in more detail in her article, but I'm just going to read this on Twitter for now. The bill, Senate Bill uh, 1738, it passed on a party line vote of 73-20. So I guess all other Republicans voted for it and the 20 Democrats voted against it. The bill states that, quote, moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity do not create a presumption that any particular placement is contrary to the best interest of the child. This is insane to me. Like, we've decided that a parent being anti-queer, that, that just doesn't affect queer children. We've decided that that, that that makes them a good placement for that queer child. Like, what the hell here? The Department of Children's Services shall not require a current or prospective adoptive or foster parent to affirm, accept, or support any government policy regarding sexual orientation or gender identity that conflicts with the parent's sincerely held religious or moral beliefs. They're legalizing child abuse. And like, listen, the, the foster system in the U.S. is already super messed up. It's already like a human trafficking thing. It, like, it's a complicated issue and it prioritizes religious individuals. Religious individuals then get into being foster parents. And like, there was a whole huge operation like discovered a year ago that we were streaming about where these foster parents who had tons of kids coming through their house, they were literally sex trafficking these children. Like, honestly, I feel like if you have certain religious beliefs that there should be an even higher bar for you as far as scrutiny to prevent you from harming children, potentially. Like, we're sitting here screening out LGBTQ potential foster parents. Like, I highly doubt, even if my partner and I owned a house, I highly doubt that the state would approve us. I mean, I live in Kansas, so they would find some bullshit excuse to not approve us because, ooh, we're so bad for kids. But meanwhile, the state of Tennessee is literally saying parents being against the thing that the child is. It's like if they made a law saying specifically that racist parents can adopt black kids. You know what I mean? Like, that's the level of f***ed up that we're at here. Yeah, it's crazy how they do not view children as literal humans. No, they're just pieces on a board. They're just a concept you can invoke in order to like redirect the target onto a, like a new person. Ooh, that person's harming children. Gay people are harming children. Trans people are harming children. Let's send a mob after them. It's not like they're actual human pe people though. It's just a concept to invoke. Yeah, the department shall not deny any parents uh, eligibility to foster or adopt based in whole or in part upon the parents sincerely held religious or moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity. How are you scrutinizing the sincerely held religious or moral beliefs? The department um, 
shall not establish or enforce a standard rule or policy that precludes consideration of a parent for placement based in whole or in part upon the parent's sincerely held religious or moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity. These beliefs do not create a presumption that any particular placement is contrary to the best interest of the child. Like, this is the official state-held position that it is in the best interests of a queer child to be put through conversion therapy. That is officially what this represents as far as, like, the state policy dictation. Their official presumption is that being placed with an anti-queer parent is what is desirable for a queer child. That's what they want. They want to snuff out queer people in every avenue of life. And I guess one of the easiest ways to do it is stealing children from the group and forcing them to not be like that anymore. That is one of the conditions of genocide. That's why what happened to the Native Americans was a genocide. Even if they hadn't killed a shit ton of them, they still stole their children force them to cut their hair, force them to stop speaking their language and honoring their religion. And then, oh, look at that. In one generation, you have eliminated a culture because that grand that kid cannot speak to their grandmother anymore. Like there is such a cultural divide now. They have a new religion, a new language. They know nothing of their original whatever. That is the goal of removing children from the group. When you intercept migrant families at the southern border and you oh, you know, we've decided that the kids, you know, we're going to put them in a nice little foster home and then, oh, we're just going to fumble the paper paperwork uh, connecting these children to their parents and then they get, like, permanently formally adopted by these white families that, of course, they're not making sure to teach the kids Spanish or, like, no, what they're going to do is try to get that kid to culturally conform to American culture and assimilate here. It is genocide. And that's exactly the same thing happening here. Aaron points out the potential for abuse is dire because if a parent believes that conversion therapy through their church could cure the gay or trans kids, that belief is not considered contrary to the best interest of an LGBTQ child. This is something that could be particularly harmful to, tra uh, to queer youth in the foster care system because studies show that 30% of foster youth are LGBTQ+, and 5% are transgender specifically. Many are in the system because of family rejection or abuse. Like, I cannot imagine being a queer kid who got kicked out of their house because they're gay or because they're trans and then being, you know, put in a foster system that is supposed to be taking care of you. And then they literally place you with people who are going to take you to conversion therapy. Yeah, it truly takes any consideration of the child's well-being out of the adoption process. Like, what do you think... Like, do children get any say in this process? Like, if a child is like, I don't want to be placed with a anti-queer person, is there any consideration? And when I say child in this context, remember, we're talking about anyone under 18. So if you're 13 years old and you've been kicked out because your mom found out that you are dating someone of the same gender, and then you get put in the foster care system even if it's in the interim while they're trying to figure out a better placement for you, that kid doesn't have any say. Major Domo says in the chat, when I was adopted, I was asked by a judge if I actually wanted it. That's like the pipe dream best case scenario for some kids. It's crazy how little we regard their wishes. Has Governor Lee actually signed this Tennessee bill? Um, they've, they, I think they've passed the bill. I guess I don't know. Hold on, let me check if the governor has signed it. Let me look for the detail on that. Kitty Tech says, I know people who've been through conversion therapy. There is a special circle of hell that was constructed for the people who came up with those places. Yeah, we're talking about electroshock therapy. We're talking about like forcing these kids to associate really toxic ideas with their um, identities. Let me see. Okay, so we're, you, someone asked if the governor had actually signed it. Okay, it has passed through the Senate. So I think it has yet to be signed. It passed through the Senate on uh, April the 1st. So today is April the 3rd, and I'm expecting it usually, it might take like a week for it to get through to the governor's desk. Let's see, does Aaron mention whether it's likely? Yeah, so the bill now goes to Governor Bill Lee's desk. She does not comment on whether it's likely that he's going to sign it. It's definitely worth pointing out specifically that LGBTQ plus youth are more likely to have a history with conversion therapy. Placement with new families that subject them to those same practices could have disastrous outcomes because LGBTQ youth who are subjected to conversion therapy have a 2.5 times higher suicide risk. 
I don't know if that's compared to the general population or compared to other queer youth who haven't experienced conversion therapy, but either way, it is not good. The human rights campaign is calling for a veto, so we'll see. That comparison is to their peers. So it's 2.5 times higher. So queer youth who've been subject to conversion therapy are 2.5 times higher to have a suicide attempt, 2.5 times more likely to have a suicide attempt versus the regular queer population, which already has a slightly higher suicide risk than the general population. So yeah, like, okay, talking about what's in the best interest of children, putting them in a situation where they're likely to be subjected to a type of treatment that increases their suicidality by almost threefold. That's crazy to me. Like, of course it's crazy to me. We can friggin' hope that the thing gets vetoed, but like, I don't know anything about him. Hold on, Tennessee governor. He's a Republican. I don't know if he has said anything about trans people. Well, they recently, in Tennessee, they passed one of the most restrictive drag laws, right? They were, they tried to pass a law. It ended up getting stopped in the courts, but they were passing a law that had something to do with like drag in public. And it was very far reaching and it was struck down on the basis that it intervened with the right to freedom of expression in our first amendment but they still passed it and that means that this governor signed it so if this governor signed the most restrictive drag ban that's passed in this country that was struck down by the courts or at least held by the courts while it made its way through like i really doubt that this dude is going to strike down a law that says you're allowed to abuse queer children as a foster parent essentially yeah, I agree, Viren. It is crazy how cucked we are by religion that some obviously harmful and useless crap like conversion therapy isn't not only banned worldwide, but considered a hate crime. Conversion therapy should be considered a hate crime. It's a, it's a, an abhorrent thing to do to someone. There are fewer survival survivors of conversion therapy graduates than people who lost their lives. So of the people who, quote, graduate from conversion therapy, like, a majority end up like harming themselves. I'm assuming that the ones who don't graduate are the ones who are like, I'm not doing all of this. And for some reason, yeah, Mormons who are super into conversion therapy are like, oh, that's a charitable organization. They're not harming anybody, whatever. Cross your fingers for the queer kids out there. Hope that they have something good ahead of them because man, it's gonna be rough for a few years here. Much love to my patrons, especially Tiago Nascimento. Mersh Rolvog, Michelle Frateroli, Amanda B, Wellington Marcus, Michelle Winter, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Sojo, Elizabeth Bartell, Ella V Nobody, Kevin Young, Sarah A, Athiet, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.